Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. We're back on Amazing Business Radio. My name's Shep Hyken, and we have a great episode today because, and I am going to probably butcher his name, but his name is uh, Jecho Dobrev, and he has devoted his career to the art and science of customer experience management, and he has a brand new book titled The Big Miss, How Organizations Overlook the value of emotions. And we are going to be talking about how emotions tie into the customer experience. Before we do that, a couple of quick announcements. And if you listen to the show, you know what they are. If you've got an amazing story that you want to share or a question that you want to ask, please go to any of the social media channels like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I am there. And if it is a question, use the hashtag Ask Shep. I'll either answer the question there in my newsletter on this show or on my TV show, Be Amazing or Go Home, which can be found on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Prime, C-Suite TV, a number of other streaming platforms, as well as YouTube. All you need to do is go to beamazing.tv. That's beamazing.tv. All right, let's get into the interview. If you're ready, I'm ready. And the gentleman I just mentioned, his name again is Jecho Dobrev. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, very good, Chef. Well done. Um, amazing. <laughs> and, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here with you. Now, we know, or I know, that you're from the UK, but when I hear that accent, it sure doesn't sound very British to me. Actually, you're from Bulgaria. Yes? Correct. Yes. Yep. And you are working with my friend Colin Shaw and uh, in the company Beyond Philosophy. And I love this idea that you are focusing on emotion because I believe forever that customer loyalty is, is all based on an emotional connection that the customer has with the company. So let's just dive into it. And by the way, I want to start off where you share some of the research that you've done because it is absolutely exhaustive and incredible. And when I say that, I mean, I think you know, statistically valid research is if you inter interview 600 consumers, the media loves it when it's at least a thousand, which means your margin from error gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But you actually surveyed tens of thousands of customers to get the information that you have. So let's go ahead and start there and share with us a little bit about that. Sure. Well, I think it's, uh, I'll start with how the idea started. So first of all, and, and again, you mentioned Colin. Colin always said that he thought that we're sitting on a gold mine, that we have this database that we've collected over so many years of doing research with organizations. But like you said, it was actually so big that we were having trouble to figure out how to go about analyzing it. First, we thought about combining it into, into you know, one model, but even those, for example, that we've worked with, uh, with telecoms and the, the, the research that we did was very similar and we used sort of, we investigate similar things. We couldn't even combine um, the data into, into one model, for, even for, for telecoms only. Uh, and, and, and so it happens that you have this thing that sits on the back of your mind for so many years. And during the pandemic, I finally had the idea of how to go about analyzing it. So instead of analyzing it with one model, we'll just use one same structure uh, and follow the same structure with, um, with about, um, so the, the analysis was about, uh, was based on like almost 19,000 customers from 24 large organizations. Uh, from nine industry sectors, I think, and I am, uh, analyze something like 56 customer segments. So, so some of these segments could be based on geographic models like cus uh, machine customers in North America, South America, and so on. Or some of these could be like insurance customers. Uh, so all different customers. industries is what you're saying. Yes, and, yeah. yes, and different industries. And so how, how this happened, like, you know, when the pandemic um, hit and um, all our projects came to a halt, um, I was sitting and thinking about this database. But one of the things that got me was we're working with a pharmaceutical company and I was talking to their, um, to their customers. Again, it was B2B. And, you know, in talking to customers, you see how relationships are important um, in business and you can, you can see how 
the the, num the the amount of business they get is very much based on on or, or dependent on this relationship. So, uh, but then in the pandemic, obviously, what happened is like account managers, salespeople, they stopped traveling to see people. They were just doing Zoom calls. So I was thinking, yeah, well, that's, we that, that I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there because. Uh, I, I mean, by the way, you mentioned pharmaceutical B2B. I assume it's a, a pharmaceutical manufacturer selling to a, a retailer. Is that what uh, uh, to be distributed or a doctor's uh, office? Uh, but, but you know what? Actually, that doesn't even matter. But the point is you are doing this and finding out that there is just on the Zoom calls. Was there a drop in the emotional connection or a gain? Because uh, you know, you could go visit somebody once in a while, but you can jump on a Zoom call, you know, every other day if you want it. Mm -hmm. well, I'll tell you what one executive said. They said, eyes that don't see each other forget each other. So Ooh, I think... Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> eyes exactly. that don't see each other forget each other. That, exactly. That's a very tweetable moment right now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I think... Um, when I spoke to people, half of them said, yeah, we're happy with the Zoom meetings. Half of them said, well, actually, we prefer to go with the, with the, to the good old days of, you know, actually seeing people. Uh, but there was, there was some um, uh, rational and, um, and also subconscious aspects about, um, um, about uh, the, the salespeople and account managers seeing people. The rational ones are like, they talk us about the new product, how to use it, blah, blah, blah. But the subconscious were about uh, the feeling of the relationship, the fact that that sales agent treats both uh, surgeons and support staff uh, uh, like with the same uh, amount of respect and things like that. Uh, the fact that they drop by and just say hello and things like that. Um, but anyway, my point was, it's easy to calculate now that the agents have stopped traveling, how much cost they can save on travel, cars, car insurance and everything. But how do you calculate the value of that relationship? How much value does that add? So, so I thought, okay, well, let's look at our database and let's, and let's find out how, how much value the do relationships provide in business, okay? And let's compare. And the other thing um, that I did is like, well, we, if relationships are important and our, you know, history of doing this research with so many organizations shows that they're important. But when you look at the typical journey maps that most organizations have, where in that journey map is the place for relationship? Most journey maps follow the, the, the customer infinity uh, loop, where you start with brand and advertising, learning about the organization, getting on board, the buying experience, uh, then you have uh, payment, customer service experience, communications, and, and things like that, the self-service experience. But nowhere on those journey maps, there's a thing called relationships. Right? Now, if, if I want to, um, you and I believe, and I don't know where in the book it is, but you talk about there were, th what you just mentioned, there are 10 of those, and you added the 11th, which yes. was the emotional connection. Yes, exactly. So then we compare, okay, between product, the digital sales service uh, experience, buying experience, uh, uh, customer service experience with the contact centers and, 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 and what's not, which of these, how much do each of these uh, customer journey moments, how much value do each of these provide? And when you compare relationships and, and the emotional connection, uh, how do these stack against each other? And, 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 and so we did, I did 56 models with, like I said, 56 different custom, customer segments of, of so many large organizations across the, blo the globe. And this is what we found. Uh, we found that, emo so first we started, well, let's, let's test uh, the, how much value do relationships drive in business. But, but when, we, when we created this 11 touch point, the things that we created there was things like I feel like I feel relationship with this company, but also things like uh, the company cares about me as a person. Um, the company is responsive, listens to me, understands my needs, things like that. And uh, and when we look at those things, we found that it's it's more it's not just about the feeling of relationship. It's about it's about emotional connection. And if you think about who do you have relationships with in your personal life? 
you know that those are your your spouse and your your kids your your relatives your, your close friends and if you think about what makes those relationships it's that emotional bond so we call that touch points instead of feeling of relationship we called it with a bigger name called emotional attachment and what we found was that emotional attachment was responsible for about 43 percent of business value product came second product and using the various product features came second with about 20 percent brand and advertisement uh, came third with 18 percent communications with nine percent and, and so on but and this, this was but emotional attachment is at the top and by the way we're talking about loyal customers we're our, our customers that keep coming back that's the key you, you don't do this on the first well you start the process of what we're talking about here on the first visit. It may lead to a second visit and a third visit. And at some point, the reason the customer keeps coming back is because a big part of that value proposition that the company is providing is this experience that is related to the emotional connection of feeling tr uh, valued, appreciated. And I would say at that point, the customer starts to trust the brand at a level that's you know, bigger, better, uh, competitively more important than just uh, a place they stop and do business with. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So we look at things like when we say value to organization, it's things like the customer recommending the organization, the customer coming back. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. Yeah, I know that. I'll I know there's back. a title of a book <laughs> title. It's I'll be back. So. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it's also um, it's also like um, uh, we spoke with you. It's also um, preference over the competition. So, you know, like some people come back from uh, out of convenience because I'll go to the supermarket because it's the closest to me. But it's also about the, the seeing the differentiation between this company and, and the other company um, and, 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 and so on. Uh, ease of doing business as well. Um, um, so, so we found that, and, and this is, we use these as proxies for, for business value because there's a lot of research that shows if organizations do that, um, um, they get business value. And, and this is what we found. But here's the interesting, the very interesting part, or one of the very interesting parts. Now, so we found that emotions statistically, uh, you know, those emotions are the main reason why people um, stay with the company, um, do more business with them and, and things like that. But if you ask customers, customers, what do you want? What's the most important thing for you? And, and we did this like 56 models. So in 59% of the cases in those models, customers would say something related to the product. Like if it's insurance, it would be competitiveness of, of, of prices, of premiums, uh, competitiveness of coverage. If it's telecom, it will be reliability of the network, speed of the internet connection, right. things like mm -hmm. that. Something uh, cost of this, uh, if, it's, if it's a big uh, machine like John Deere or Caterpillar, it will be like uh, reliability of, of the machine, the price of parts, availability parts, things like that. Okay. So people would say the most important thing about, uh, to me in this experience, it's about this product. But only in you know what's only i think in nine percent or something like that of the cases was indeed that product feature the biggest driver of value only nine percent yes in 56 percent people say we want the product thing but only nine percent statistically speaking that had the you know the biggest link to to the customer renewing their contract insurance mm -hmm. um, staying more with them and things like that whereas only in in 2% of the cases um, uh, was something about emotion stated as the most important thing to the customer. Only 2%. Yes. But, but you, so you're going somewhere with this. I know that. And uh, um, I want to, you know, we're going to take a break in a moment. I don't want you to leave us hanging, but go ahead and give us the quick version of why, but, but 2%, does that make it important? Yeah, so two percent say it's important, but actually, when you when you look at the model and what actually links to, to their behavior and attitudes, in seventy something percent of the models, um, it was that uh, it was uh, that emotional connection. So basically, people are saying we want the product, but actually, what they what really drives their behavior and attitudes towards organizations is that emotional connection. 
All right, so I'm going to talk about that with you after the break. I want to make sure I understand. People don't realize that what they're really interested in is an emotional connection. They think it's the product, the value, the price, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to dive into that. And I also want to talk to you about a company uh, we might be familiar with, Amazon, who has virtually no connection with their customers from the standpoint of human to human, but somehow has managed to bridge this, uh, I'll call it the chasm, and create uh, a great customer experience that does create the emotional connection. I believe the emotional connection is due to trust and confidence that you know, when exactly. you buy, things are going to happen the way they're supposed to happen. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about that. Just want to mention again, the book is titled The Big Miss, How Organizations Overlook the Value of Emotions, the Emotional Connection, More Important Than Ever. This is Amazing Business Radio. Don't go away. Hi, Shep Hyken, your customer service and experience expert. And I'm excited to tell you about my new book, I'll Be Back, How to Get Customers to Come Back Again and Again. Now, this book is packed with idea after idea on how to, just as the title implies, get your customers to come back. In the book, you'll learn that repeat customers aren't always loyal customers. Now, both are great, but there's a big difference. You'll also learn about 10 reasons a customer may stop doing business with you and three reasons you would stop doing business with them. And one of my favorite lessons is a six-step process for creating an I'll Be Back strategy. Of course, there's much, much more. You'll start getting more of your customers to say, I'll be back almost immediately. Just go to www.I'llBeBackBook.com. Again, that's www.I'llBeBackBook.com. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio, and we are talking with Jesho Dobrev. It actually looks like Zecho, Z-H-E-C-H-O. And by the way, I'm spelling this, Z-H-E-C-H-O, Dobrev, D-O-B-R-E-V. That way, when you go on Amazon to look for this book, you can look him up by author and know it's his name and his book, The Big Miss, How Organizations Overlook the Value of Emotions. All right, picking up on the conversation that we were having just before the break, you said that when we did this survey, 2% of the customers felt, yeah, that relationship is important. But the reality is, as you looked at more and more data from almost 20,000 customers, you found out that actually the emotional connection is much more important to the point of trumping uh, product quality, et cetera, et cetera. That emotional connection really drove repeat and loyal business. Go ahead. Give me a little bit more insight on that, please. Well, so, so there's two questions there. Why are emotions so important and people don't even don't realize themselves they're important? And the second thing is like, well, how come people are not aware of what really drives their attitudes and behavior, like what they really want? So I think, uh, and, and there's really interesting research in, and, and I'll try to provide a psychological answer to, to, to these questions. So one is like, why are emotions so important? Um, I think the, 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 the reason for that is, is, is memory, because of memories. Mm. And um, I, I like the, the thing, one of the most profound things for us is from Professor Daniel Kahneman, who says that people don't buy, uh, don't choose between experiences. They choose between the memories of their experience. So, for example, if, if when you're thinking, shall I renew my contract or my insurance uh, with this company, you're not basing the decision based on, on that moment. You're basing your decision based on your memory with that organization throughout the your the years that you've been working with them and what Kahneman says is people don't remember everything like if you think about to to, to your kids uprising you don't remember every single day that you've been with them but you remember the peak moments yeah the highlights the highlights exactly mm -hmm. uh, and so what he says people remember the peak moments which could be positive negative and and the endings right so we choose between the memories and what creates and, and how do people remember um there is scientifically proven link between memory and emotion. So in short, I think, I think the reason emotions are so important is because they're linked to our memories. And, and when we make a decision, should we buy from this organization or not, we, we make that decision because, uh, based on the memories of our experience. Right. So, so oftentimes that memory is based on 
a relationship that we have with a salesperson, customer support, uh, or perhaps we love the process. Like there's companies that I call that, you know, as soon as you call, if there's hold, they tell you how long the hold is. They give you the option of having a callback. Or maybe, uh, and I've mentioned this before, I don't need to keep mentioning uh, the company. Okay, I won't give you their name, but their initials are GoDaddy. I love that company. And mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever been put on hold for more than less. Well, actually, I'd say never more than a minute. I call two, three times a year for support as I renew domain names or have a question about something. Always, it, it just, it blows my mind. Anyway, the confidence there is number one, I never have to wait, so it's convenient. Number two, I love the people I talk to because they're very knowledgeable, knowledgeable and helpful. And number three, that's why I keep doing business with them. And, exactly. and I feel an emotional connection to the way they do business. Now, there's other companies that I feel an emotional connection to the person I have on the inside. But then there's companies, and this is where I was going before the break, I mentioned Amazon. Companies that virtually never have an emotional connection, but have created unprecedented loyalty. How do you get a, an emotional connection with an e-commerce company or uh, a typical business where you have very little, if any, connection to a human? Well, there are va various ways. So for example, one of the things is like showing that you know customers or personalizing things. So your Amazon screen and my don't look anything like that. Um, and actually with Amazon, for example, um, so again, you can also use data uh, and other things to, to show that you know customers. So I have, so Amazon found that I've become a father. <laughs> I'm sure that they have they, some- They found out because you kept buying baby uh, yes, I, diapers and the pattern but, but, was there. But it's the first thing. Like, I think I went um, and I bought uh, a baby, baby monitor uh, and something. And then they started sending me letters, uh, um, emails with like your, your three month baby, your six month. And actually, when I click on that, uh, I thought, oh, there's very interesting ideas about toys and very other practical things. So uh, it's personalized. It shows that, that, uh, that they know me. Uh, it's, it's, you know, how they, make, they try to make everything frictionless. But again, my relationship with Amazon obviously starts from before. Uh, I love their um, no question asks, asked policy. So, for example, once I ordered the book, the book came um, uh, wet and, 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 you know, damaged. Soaked, damaged yes. And so I, I wrote them a letter and they just, I kept the book and they sent me a brand new one, no questions asked. So, you know, a number of things like that. Then there is the, the brand. Um, so think about, so I'll give you two examples of, of branding that you can create. Um, one is, for example, BMW, which I'm a fan, and, and one is, for example, Patagonia. Uh, and let's I'll put them in, in these categories. So with BMW, you can make this emotional, emotional branding where, you know, the joy, um, the joy. So BMW's emotion was joy. The joy about driving and right. joy is very much in, in their materials. And they have an amazing car. And no doubt you get into that car and you get into others and you can feel the difference. And if you're into that, it's exhilarating to drive a car like that. Hence, I believe exhilarating is an emotion. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it feels like, so there's also emotions in products. It feels like, you know, it's for people like you. And the second one is you can again create an emotional connection with, with customers based on shared values. So like Patagonia, Patagonia yeah. and, and Lush, it shows like it's for people like me. It's like when I'm using their products, I'm showing that I, we share the, the, share, the, the same values like right. that. So you can create these emotional connections without having person-to-person uh, -person interactions and, and so on. Right. I featured Lush in one of my books because they created a community based on a common interest. I, I believe no animal testing in their cosmetics. Yes. Uh, Patagonia is all about sustainability in the world. And our research has shown that consumers are drawn to companies that have a cause that they're interested in. And it actually trumps price a little bit. Believe it or not, it actually uh, service as well. Uh, people are willing to sacrifice some customer service. Not all, by the way, you still have to create a decent experience, but you don't have to be over the top or even better than somebody else who doesn't have the same cause or interest that the customer has. So as we wind up, 
Um, your book, and, and again, I love the book, The Big Miss, How Organizations Overlook the Value of Emotions. I'm gonna, my one thing question this time is, can you give me one like huge takeaway summarized in under a minute, your favorite one from the book? What would that be? <laughs> well, maybe the easiest thing um, that I'll give advice is like to show that you know customers. Um, and, um, and one of the examples I liked, uh, I put there was actually from a book from Chip and Dan Heath called, um, uh, yeah, um, Chip and Dan Heath. Um, uh, yes. Uh, the power, the power of moments. Oh yeah. I love that book. And that, by the way, you kind of referenced the moments earlier with, um, there's the middle in, or the mo moments that happen in the middle and the moments at the end. And those are what drive the memories, uh, exactly. that you're talking about. So in, in that book, they, sh they, told, they tell the example of YMCA, the, the gyms, which um, they had some statisticians and they were thinking, so again, the same thing. People say that they want more fancy new fitness equipment, blah, blah, blah. But they found that the reason actually people were, were staying was because, because the, the staff in the gym would, tell, would, would greet the customer by their name or would show that they know the customer by name. So, so I love this example because, again, it shows the difference between what people say they want and, and this emotional connection. And sometimes the way you create this emotional connection is by showing, you know, customers. Yeah, love it. And I think that's what we're talking about. And we use the Amazon example. But here's what, and, and, you know, people are probably sick of me for using Amazon. But honestly, is there a better company from the standpoint of recognition and lessons that we can learn from a great brand? Everybody knows who they are. They most likely experienced it. So what I want you to do for those listening to our show, I want you to substitute your company for uh, the name Amazon, uh, BMW, and even Patagonia or Lush. So put your company in there as you're thinking about what we talked about today and ask yourself, Am I doing what was just mentioned on this show? What uh, Jecho just said to us, just substitute our name. And then are we able to do that? Because if so, we're probably crossing into the ability to uh, create that emotional connection, uh, which is what we're looking for, which will help drive the value. It'll help drive repeat business, advocacy, and uh, all the things you talked about at the top of the show. So I want to thank you for being on our show. Uh, this has been great. I know I can talk to you for hours and hours because I'm fascinated with the topic and I'm fascinated with the research you did proving out the topic and making it valid. So thanks for being on Amazing Business Radio. Thank you very much, Chef, for having me. All right, everybody, that wraps it up. Another episode of Amazing Business Radio. And we will be back next week with another amazing interview. And until then, this is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.